So this video is much needed. We're gonna talk about the most dangerous part of a solar power system, especially if you build it yourself, and how to avoid electrocution. Now I'm not trying to fear monger or to scare you with gore pictures, which I really wanted to do, but I'm probably not because I'm not sure if the community guidelines would let that. But electricity can mess you up. It can kill you instantly, it's invisible, it can burn you internally, it can cause your organs to explode, you can get an arc flash, you can get burns all over your your body and if you look up the pictures it is terrifying but if you know what you're doing you'll never get hurt now first we're going to talk about the most dangerous part of a solar system and that is without a doubt every single time going to be the solar panels the solar panels when you put them into a series stream and you create a large voltage upwards of 500 volts DC that type of electricity can kill you instantly and a lot of the older guys will say oh it's not the voltage that kills you it's the current Everything in a solar power system can deliver enough current to kill an elephant. What actually matters is if the voltage is high enough to overcome the resistance of your skin and to allow current to flow. Because less than one amp can kill you, but a battery that can deliver a thousand amps at 12 volts, you can touch both terminals all day and nothing will happen. And going by NEC and OSHA, they all say that any voltage over 50 volts is dangerous. And pretty much every solar system on the planet now has a string voltage higher than 50 volts. So you have to be very careful when you're working with solar panels. But if you know what you're doing, you'll never get shocked. So I'm gonna show you a really cool tool. These are called PV disconnects. And whether your inverter has one built in or not, I highly recommend you guys buy one anyways and put it in line with your system. All it is is a switch so that you can turn off the power coming from the solar panels and these come in every size this one's more for a larger system but you can also use these for small systems even like a small eco flow so you connect your solar panels right here and you connect your eco flow right here now inside there's a circuit breaker but this is not a typical circuit breaker this one is rated for high voltage and it can extinguish a large dc arc so don't try to use a marine circuit breaker or a house circuit breaker. You have to use this type if you wanna use it with a solar string or else you'll have problems. The circuit breaker can melt, it can be destroyed, it can explode, it can do all sorts of things. So you need to buy one with this type of breaker. But these come ready built just like this and they're relatively cheap. Now when you connect this to some solar panels and this to your system or your solar charge controller or your inverter charger, all you have to do is turn it off so it's green and then you can work on your system. Now this disconnect allows you to work on solar panels during the day safely. Because if you were to just disconnect your system with the MC4s, you can create a very large arc and it can destroy these connectors. And it can lead to failure of these connectors and possibly worse. Now the breaker has a current rating and typically they're rated at 30, 40, or 50, or 60 amps. But for most systems with a single series string, you can use a 30 amp breaker. Now this is not true if you have multiple strings in parallel, then you'll have to actually calculate which one you need. But 30 amps works great for most people. Again, we're not using it for the overcurrent protection. The real reason is because this is the easiest way to extinguish a large DC arc, and these have a high voltage rating, and they're rated for DC. Now I mentioned previously that you do not want to disconnect these when current is flowing but there's a way to disconnect these that a lot of people don't know about. So it's easy to put them together, right? And typically you can just grab them like this and wiggle it and it will disconnect, but not all the time. Sometimes there's pieces of plastic and you can't even put your fingers on there or you have mismatched MC4s, which I do not recommend, but that makes it really hard to disconnect them. So if you're having a problem, you need to get one of these tools. You wanna to use the side that looks like this. And all this does is connects to the little tabs, you push it in, and then you can pull them apart. Also, there's one on the side. You can push it down like this. And this one is not working. So let's try this one, just like that. Now you used to have to buy these separately, but now they actually come with these disconnects, which is fantastic. Now the next dangerous part of your system is the batteries. Now luckily most batteries today can be turned off like server rack batteries. There's a big switch on the front, you switch it off and then you can work on your system. But if you cannot turn off your batteries like 12 volt batteries, you're gonna have to wire up your system, your inverter, your solar charge controller first, and then connect the battery last. That way when you're working on your system, there are no live conductors. Even with 12 volts, 
volts, it's a relatively safe voltage, it can still create a lot of current. If you cause a dead short, you can cause an arc and vaporized copper can shoot into your face or your eyes, especially if you have large cables and a big battery bank, that's super dangerous. So you always want to hook up the battery last when everything else is connected. Now, obviously with an inverter, if you're working on the output, you need to turn it off, but that's easy. Most inverters can be shut down. And if you never work with a live voltage, you'll be good to go. The only exception is the solar panels. If you want to be super safe, you can work on them at night, or you could build your whole array, set them all up, and then at night, connect them in series, connect them to a solar disconnect switch, and then connect it to your system, and then turn it on last. If you follow these steps, you'll never die. You'll be good to go. Now, even if you shut everything down, you always want to test to make sure. So use a voltmeter to verify that the battery or the inverter or whatever has no voltage present. And these are cheap. These are like 30 bucks. So if you use the proper tools and the proper gear, you'll never have a problem, but you need to follow the protocol. You need to be safe with this stuff. You can never ever screw this up because you'll be dead if you do. And that's pretty much it for this video. Check these things out. I've mentioned these a lot in my videos, but I never made a dedicated video and it's so cheap and everybody should know about this. So I hope this saves some of your guys' lives and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.